All right, guys, in this vehicle specific video, we're going to be doing a 2020 Chevy Silverado 2500, which is going to be the same as the 1500 and the 3500. Um, it's just a bigger truck overall, and this is a high country model. We're going to be doing all the side windows and the rear window. Uh, just like on my other vehicle specific videos, I'm going to be pre cutting the back window, but I'll quickly explain to you how to properly do these. If you look from the back, you can see that you have the two stationary windows and the center sliding window. The two stationary windows you can cut from the inside and I'm gonna shine a light on the inside really quick so you can see from the outside exactly where to cut. You can see the dot matrix here. It's just like any other quarter glass window. You would lay the film on the outside and cut right to the edge of the dot matrix there. Now with the inside window, the, the center window that slides, it's a little bit different. You can see we have a solid line on the inside but the problem here is that if you try to cut this out on the outside, the, um, the sides of these windows are covering this quarter glass window as well as the gasket on the top and the bottom. So the best way to do this is to take a tape measure or a flat ruler, re measure the height, measure the width, and then bring those measurements to a table and cut an exact square for this and just round out the corners a little nice and um, <clears throat> you'll be able to lay that on there perfectly. So just cut a square with the measurements, lay it on the table, round out the corners, and then you can pop right on, it's just a square. And there's plenty of room to work with, so you don't have to worry about exact measurements. Measure it a little bit bigger, and you'll be good to go. All right, so let's start with the outside prep. We'll pop the panel, pull the gasket out, do the inside prep, and lay out the bulk material. So on the 2020, you're gonna have two bolts on the bottom. There's gonna be two bolts behind this wood grain here, and then you have the one behind the handle. We need to remove this plastic behind the handle cover here. You can see there's a little notch. We'll stick the hook tool in there, pop that open, pop that off. And just like any other Chevy, there's a seven millimeter that we're gonna pop out there. To take the wood grain out, you'll stick a gasket jamming stick between the wood grain, which is the chrome piece, and the plastic door panel, and you twist. And you have to do this from the front because in the back, there's a little tongue that goes into the groove and slides into place. And then we'll have the two seven millimeters in there. You can see the one and two. Get those out. And then you have two on the bottom of the door panel. You can see right here. So the new body style Chevy Silverados you got to take the whole panel off. You can't just pull back on the top like you could on the previous models. We're going to start by grabbing the front bottom corner of the panel and giving it a nice tug. And work your way around. And then we can lift up. And you can see the gasket's revealed and we can pull that out. And once the gasket's out, you can leave the door lock pin hanging sideways, that's okay. Just line up your door pins or the door clips across the bottom. And snap it into place to temporarily hold it. We'll go ahead and take off the rear door panel and then we'll proceed with the inside cleaning. So same exact thing here. Plastic behind the handle, wood grain, or whatever type of interior it has this plastic piece here from the front to the back slide it out one screw behind the handle two screws behind the grip or under, under the grip and then I believe there's just one down here yep so on the back door there's only one screw on the bottom we'll grab the panel from the front and lift up Pull the gasket out. Line up the bottom clips. Now we're ready to prep the inside. Now for the back seat, with the back windows, we're gonna put the seats up a little bit so we have more working room. 
We're gonna pop the headrests out and we're just gonna scrub the inside since they had the froster lines on them with the blue non-score pad. So to pop the headrest out, there's two little buttons on the side. Well, one on each side. Lift it up, you can lean the headrest down by pushing this button on the side. I'm gonna spray it up with a light mist and scrub it with the blue non-score pad. Quick wipe down. Since I already have these pre-cut, I'm gonna install these quick with you guys and then we'll move on to the door windows. When I pre-cut the window film, I'll take them all into the back seat like this, lay them all on top if they're small windows like this, I'll lay them on a the seat next to me and if I'm doing this window, I'll grab this pattern. I'll hold it up like so, give it a light mist so it adds some weight to it and takes away the static. Then I'll go ahead and squeegee the window. You can even do this if you hand cut them, bring them all inside. Light mist. I'll grab the tint side. Make sure there's no stickers or anything on your finger. Peel the liner. Lightly mist it. Turn it around and place it on the window. Lining it up, make sure there's no light gaps. and squeegee it in place. Same thing for the center, lightly missed. Squeegee clean, lightly missed. We'll grab the piece you can see on the pre-cut here. We have a little notch in the corner. You don't need to have that notch as aggressive as it is. You can just go straight across, but it's making up for the actual pattern that's on the window. So we'll lightly miss this, peel the liner, place it on the window. Make sure there's no gaps. And then we'll squeegee it in place. These windows are the most straightforward, easy windows that you'll ever do. Even if you have to hand cut them, that's completely fine. Just cut a straight line and you'll be good to go. And we'll do the last one here. By the way, this is 20% SunTech Standard Pro going over the factory 20% windows. So it makes it about 5% visibility. Peel the liner on the last one. that on there and then squeegee it out I like to do these windows first because um, they do tend to have fingers pop up so if we don't have to use heat I'd rather not um, but it is a good idea so if you do these first you do all the other windows after you do all the window, other windows, you can come back to these and check them over and see if there's anything popping up. If there is, obviously you just push it out and then it's done. So that's why I like to do these first so they can sit for a bit and you can give them a final check before you put everything else back together. So let's get into the door windows. So if you didn't wipe the lower sections of the outside yet, let me just do that really quick. This is a 20 inch window, but I have a 40 inch roll. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay the material out I'm gonna cut the excess off and then I'll use that for the other side because I don't have a 20 inch roll at the moment. So we'll spray this window up. Lay out our bulk material. Again, SunTech Standard Pro, 20%. Now if you're short, I would definitely not recommend doing this this way. If you are shorter, you can um, pre-pull it on a table. All right, so we laid out the bulk material. The first thing we're gonna do, and what I like to do on these vehicles, is shift it a little bit both ways. So I'm gonna shift it forward first by cutting the front. 
an inch from the top. So you want to cut up, leaving an inch on the top. We'll then shift it forward. A little bit more than a quarter of an inch. We'll slightly mount it in the center, just so it doesn't move. And then we'll cut the back edge, one inch from the top. Then we'll release this squeegee mark that we did in the center so that we can shift it. And then we'll shift it back very slightly. This gives a little extra material on the back side and more on the front, making sure that there is no light gaps. Make sure that bottom edge is lined up, then we'll squeegee it in place. Cut the excess material off. save that for the other side. All right, so just by visual, this window looks like it's bigger than 20%, so I don't wanna mislead you guys. I'm gonna measure this now after I laid it out and make sure that it is. And it turns out that the new body style, it is an inch bigger roughly than 20 inches, so you will have to use a 40 inch roll. You can do it sideways, so that way um, you, you're not gonna be able to shrink the fingers, but if you unroll it sideways like this, you'll be able to get the, the material out. Um, un unless you have a 24 inch roll, then you can get away with that. But it is bigger than 20 inches, so advise that. Don't use the method that I did here because now that piece is wasted, but I'll be able to use it for another vehicle. So 21 inches is the height of the door and 20 inches on the rear door, but it may be bigger on the front edge because it does go on a slant, which it is. So you got about 21 inches on the rear door as well. All right, so now we have the bottom edge lined up. The front edge was cut, shifted forward. The back edge was cut, shifted back slightly. So there's overhanging material on the front and the rear. And we're gonna go ahead and roll this down and cut the top. Something to pay attention to is that the key will automatically shut off about every five minutes. So just pay attention to that. You may need to turn the key back on or push the button again. So we'll mount it in place and cut the top like we would on any other vehicle. And we'll go ahead and clean up the edges. Use the gold card, line that up, and then we'll round out those corners. The top rear corner, top front corner and then the bottom corner is nice and tight then we can go ahead and mount this on the outside to be installed one is from the top overhanging the back squeegee it across the top now, when we bottom load this, it's gonna be just like bottom loading any other vehicle. We're gonna spray it, squeegee it, spray it, and install the film. Front edge first. We're gonna drop the front bottom corner in first and work that down before we lay down the back, just like any other bottom load. Getting that front corner in and then slowly working the back in into the panel. Get that back corner into place. Slide it down, keeping the top away. And then position it, lining up the top. Good.
paying close attention as you squeegee out for the material moving. And if it is moving around a lot, you can go ahead with the gray Lake card wrapped in the towel with the heat gun, just to mount it in place across the top. Then you can squeegee over again, getting the remaining of the water out. Go down the sides with the easy reach. And then we'll give it a check from the outside. Make sure that top edge is good. You always want to make sure that top edge is sealed up really nice because that could be your main point to peel and fail other than the bottom edge. Once that's all good, we'll go ahead and roll it up. Spray the bottom edge and finish squeegeeing that out. Down the sides with the easy reach. And then we'll seal up the bottom with the gray lid co card and the heat gun. give it a quick check and then we'll move on to the back door. So when we lay out the back door, we're gonna lay out the film sideways and pull the length. Uh, there's not any fingers that need to be shrunk on this vehicle, so we can go ahead and lay the film sideways and not have to worry about shrinking fingers. And if a little finger does pop up, you can still heat it as long as you don't excessively shrink it. So we're gonna use the full 40 inch width of the roll and we're gonna roll it downwards or upwards onto the window at the length that we need, which is about 21 inches. You can do this on the front door as well. So we'll lay that down. And since we cut the film sideways, now we have to cut a straight edge. So we got to cut the bottom edge. If you ever have to cut a bottom edge, you want to mount the film in place before you do so, so that it doesn't move as you're cutting. You'll get the razor in there, cut on a 45 degree angle, cut as far back as you can, and rip the film away. And we're gonna shift this both ways, just like we did on the front door. So we'll cut one side first, which will make the back edge. Then we have to release the squeegee mount. So we'll lift that up on the bottom, spray some soapy water. And we're going to shift about a half an inch, making sure that bottom edge is still lined up. Give it a quick mount in place, and then we'll, sh we'll cut the front edge and then shift it forward slightly, making sure there's even overlapping material on the front and the rear. So we'll release that squeegee mark. Shift it back forward. We have overlapping material on the front and the rear, and the bottom edge is lined up. Mount that in place. So a quick overview. We had overhanging material with a crooked edge on the bottom, so we had to mount it in place, cut a straight edge on the bottom, cut the back edge. We released the squeegee mount, lined up the bottom again, and shifted it back a half an inch, mounted it in place, cut the front edge, and then we released the mount and added even coverage of the overlapping material on the front and the rear. So now we have it mounted in place and we're going to go ahead and roll it down and cut the top edge. All right. So now before we cut the top edge, we want to squeegee out the top, make sure that's mounted against the window. And it's a very straight, this is a very square window. So you got the straight side, straight bottom and a straight top edge. Go ahead and just cut, cut that. Clean up our edges. Do continuations of these straight sides using the gold card as our guide. Rounding out the corners.
making sure that you always use a fresh blade and you're not pressing too hard. Clean up these bottom edges. The last one. So before we go and mount the film to the outside, we'll roll the back window up to the installation position, which is about an inch from the top, maybe a little bit more. When you have a very square window, the higher up it is when you're installing it and drop and um, doing the drop install method, uh, the easier it is because you have more of the glass exposed. So when you're dropping the film, you wanna make sure the window's rolled up as much as possible within a reasonable amount so that you have more glass to work with. So we'll do our spray squeegee spray and then we'll grab the film from the outside. Go ahead and bottom load this. You could put the front corner in or the back corner in first since it is a very square window. Whichever way you feel comfortable, whichever corner you put in first on the bottom, you have to get that top in first. Slide it into the side, move it over, and you'll get this kind of like bubble here, whichever side you're working on, which is fine as long as it doesn't crease. And then you slide it back into place, smooth it out and even it out, make sure you have even coverage on each side. You can roll this down so we have more visibility of the top. So once you have the film on the glass, you can roll it down to see the top better. And then we'll line up the top and squeeze it in place. We'll push out the top with the gray lid go card and the heat gun with the towel wrapped around it. Making sure we press out the top nice and firmly using the little chiseler. This just makes sure that the top is mounted in place. And then since we didn't go down the side yet, I'll take the gray lid coat card and the sides are very open on this so you can push sideways into it with the gray lid coat. There's plenty of room. And then we'll go ahead and roll the window up spray the bottom and finish squeegeeing that out. And since we are at the bottom and I can't get into the, with the gray lid coat card, I'll use the easy reach to go down the sides and get into those bottom corners. And then we use the heat gun and the gray lid coat to push out the bottom edge and you see I sprayed a little bit of soapy water to lubricate the squeegee. Heating down into the door panel not on the, on the door panel, you don't want to melt that. Give it a little outside check. Just so you know, when you tint over factory tinted glass, you're not going to see any imperfections really in the tint, which is a good thing and a bad thing because one, the customer may see it from the outside after it dries out, or from the inside after it dries out, if they're inside the vehicle with a lot of light. and. Um, Two, you can't see it, which makes it a little bit harder. But if you look very close, you'll be able to see imperfections if there are any. You just have to have a very bright environment. This window looks good. Give it one quick check from the inside. Looking for any obvious imperfections, and there is none. So we can proceed with the door panel reinstallation, and this vehicle will be all done. But first, let's check out these back windows. They look very uniform and there's no fingers popping up, so I'll go ahead and pop the headrest back in. All right, now that all the windows are done, the bottoms aren't popping up with any fingers, we can go ahead and reinstall the gaskets and the door panels, which is very simple. Since we pulled the whole panel, we're just gonna hang it on top of the gasket, so we have to install the gasket first. So pull back on the top of the panel, releasing it. We'll simply lay the gasket back into place. It does go under these little grooves here. So you'll have to kind of bend it to get it to go under those. And then we'll release the bottom of the door panel where we mounted it. All right guys, so something happened with this that could happen to you. There's these little clips. These are, if you look down here, these two holes down here below the grip, 
this is where the screws go into. And this is a common Chevy problem, so I knew it would be an issue right away, is these little pieces, these little tabs, are what the screws go into. So you'll have to make sure that these are in place before you go and put the panel on. So you wanna hold it in place. You see that it drops down. You wanna pick it up with the hook tool, hold it in place with your finger, and there's a little pin to the right of it that you gotta push in, and that'll hold it in place. If you could see here, this little, it might be hard to see, but there's a little tab. Once you line it up with the hole, push that tab in. And that tab is what holds this whole entire tab into place. And that's where the screw goes in and threads into the other side. It's a little tricky, but it's not that big of an issue. If they fall, just pick them up and push the pin in and they'll stay in place. But that's never happened to me before, so it doesn't happen very often. So we'll follow through with the door panel reinstallation. We'll put the pin, the door lock pin, back into the hole here. Line up the top edge, lift it up a little, push it down onto the groove, smack it into place. And then we have the two screws below, below the lower grip here, one behind the door handle and one under the panel. And then the last one, and then to put this piece back in, you see you have the little tongue here, the groove there. Slide it in back. Make sure all these clips are lined up. Smack it into place. And then you have the cover here for the behind the door handle. That just pops straight on. This door is all done. Let's move on to the front door. Front door, same thing, when we pop the panel off after we put the gasket in, we're gonna wanna make sure those two threads are lined up, the thread tabs. So we'll put the gasket in first, slide it in forward, push it under the plastic there, pop the lower half off where we mounted it. And we're gonna check the tabs, and these tabs are actually falling too. After we make sure those tabs are lined up, put the door lock pin back in, Line it up to the top edge, lift it up slightly, push it down into the groove. We'll make sure that the clips are lined up with the holes and none of them are sideways and there's no tension on the panel. Once they're all lined up, you can give it a smack around the edges. And we'll go ahead and put our, all of our screws back in. We'll start with the bottom. We've got the two on the bottom on the front door. And then the two lower handle and then the one behind the door handle. Put this plastic in, remember slide it in the back, line it up with the holes, smack it into place, and then the plastic behind the door handle. That's it. And that is how you tint all the side windows and the rear window on a 2020 Chevy Silverado 2500. I'll see you guys in the next video.